So we see also Lord Ramachandra in Ramayana. We see that Lord Rama also worshipped Lord Shiva, particularly before he went to Lanka. We, it's well known that Lord Rama did worship of a Shiva Linga there before he went over to Lanka. So Srila Prabhupada was asked about this and Srila Prabhupada said yes. He was telling Lord Shiva that I'm going to go to Lanka to kill your devotee. So this was why Lord Shiva was doing the worship. of. This is why Lord Rama rather was doing the worship of Lord Shiva. Lord Rama, of course, is the Supreme Lord, and Lord Shiva, he is subordinate to Lord Rama. He is the, one of the gods of the material world, but Lord Rama is also in the spiritual world. So, Lord, worship of Lord Shiva is very much recommended in the, in the Vedas. Lord Krishna gave a boon to Lord Shiva. The boon was, your devotees will be more than mine. And we see that today, that there's many more temples of Lord Shiva, and there's many more people worship Lord Shiva than worship Lord Krishna. So this was because of the boon given by Lord Krishna to Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is also devotee of Lord Sankarshan. Lord Sankarshan is the expansion from Lord Balaram and Lord Balaram is the expansion from Lord Krishna. Sometimes said also that the, the snakes which are on the body of Lord Shiva are a manifestation of Lord Sankarshan. So in the 10th canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, it is described how on one occasion Nanda Maharaj and the other men from Vrindavan, the cowherd men, they all went to a place called Ambika. Ambika cone. And this Ambika cone is in Gujarat. And it's, it says in Srimad Bhagavatam, it said it's on the bank of the river Saraswati. However, Prabhupada remarks that there's no river Saraswati in Gujarat today. So we don't know what happened to river Saraswati. Anyway, it's mentioned that Nanda Maharaj along with the cowherd men, decided on one occasion to go there to worship Lord Shiva on Shivratri. And it's, Prabhupada explains there how Shivratri is a very important function for the Shivites. And also, as Vaishnavas, because Lord Shiva is the great Vaishnava, the greatest Vaishnava, hmm? We also offer our respects to Lord Shiva, but we don't always observe any great function on this day. But sometimes, on some occasions, we may observe Shivratri. So Srimad Bhagavatam describes how Nanda Maharaj, along with the cowherd men, they went to Ambika Kaun there and they observed the Shivratri. They came there. They fasted for the day, they drank some water at night, and they worshipped Lord Shiva, and they also worshipped Ambika, who is non-different from Mother Durga. Wherever the temple of Lord Shiva is, there should be the temple also of his wife, Mother Durga. Just like here, we have uh, Simantini, and we also have Lord Shiva. They both have to be here. They don't separate husband and wife together. Not different temples, but same place. So Nanda Maharaj was there with the cowherd men and they were observing Shivratri. So it happened that during the night, while they were resting, a great serpent appeared from 
the river Saraswati and it began to swallow up Nanda Maharaj. So all the cowherd men were, they took burning logs and they tried to beat that snake to get it to release Nanda Maharaj. But although they were using burning logs, the snake would not let go and it continued to devour Nanda Maharaj. And then Finally, Lord Krishna came, and when Lord Krishna came, he simply touched that snake with his foot. And when he touched the snake with his foot, he transformed into a, a very beautiful Vidyadhara. Vidyadhara Loka, the, it's a higher planet, similar near to Gandharva Loka, called Vidyadhara Loka. And this demigod explained that he was actually, a dem in his previous life, he had been a resident of Vidyadhara. But he was very proud of his good looks, of his beauty. You know, the, the beauty of the material world is not something to be proud of. Prabhupada wrote, that famous article, liquid beauty. That what we think is beauty in the material world is just a combination of stools and pus and urine and blood. Horrible things, not pleasant things. But we're thinking that beauty to be so important. Actually, just Yesterday I was teaching a section from Srimad Bhagavatam describing how Mother Parvati cursed Chitraketu Maharaj to become a demon. And Lord Shiva told his wife, Parvati, after she had cursed Chitraketu, Lord Shiva told his wife, he said, You're very beautiful, my dear wife, but you... You, you have beauty, but you don't have bhakti. Bhakti is much is more important than beauty. Bhakti is eternal. Beauty is not eternal. Beauty is a very temporary thing, which may be there in some bodies, but it doesn't stay for long. Quickly, you will lose that. So this... This demigod told Nanda Maharaj how he had been cursed because he had laughed at a great yogi. There was one yogi, Angira, who was, was very ugly looking. And Vijadara was very proud of his good looks. And he laughed at this yogi. So the yogi cursed him to become a snake. And Vijadara understood that although the yogi cursed him, that curse was actually a blessing for him because now he had been blessed by the touch of the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. And Vijadara described that simply by chanting your holy name, one can be liberated. What to speak of one who is so fortunate to get the dust from your lotus feet? So Nanda Maharaj and all the cowherd men, they, they, had, they witnessed this wonderful pastime, how Lord Krishna delivered this snake and allowed them to go back to the heavenly planets as a demigod. So the result of them going to worship Lord Shiva at Ambika Kaun, the result was they increased their love for Krishna. They became greater devotees of Lord Krishna because they were thinking how wonderful Lord Krishna is that he could deliver this snake, he could deliver this demigod who had been cursed to become a snake and he could deliver it so that he could go back to the heavenly planets. So Srila Prabhupada explains this kind of worship of a demigod this is good, because they became more attached to Lord Krishna. And Prabhupada then gives an example. He said, just like 
the gopis, they worshipped Katyayani. And the result of them worshipping Katyayani, they became more attached to Krishna. So if we're going to worship the devas, like Lord Shiva or Katyayani or any deva, the purpose should be to increase our attachment to Krishna. Then it is very good. Then it is proper. But if we worship just to get some material blessing, some material result, it is not good. Just this worship of the demigods is condemned in Bhagavad Gita. That these people who worship demigods, they are described as alpamedasaha, people with a small brain. Prabhupada said, Alpa made us, I said, the brain is like stool because they are worshipping to get things which are limited and temporary. So, another wonderful pastime which is narrated also in Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto is the pastime where Aniruddha had an, and somehow had fallen into a relationship with Usha who was the daughter of Bana. And Bana Sura was the eldest son of Bali Maharaj. But ba we know Bali Maharaj was a great devotee and he surrendered everything to Lord Vamanadeva. But Bana Sura, he was a great devotee of Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva had blessed him to have 1,000 arms. But this kind of blessing gave him a lot of trouble. And he even came to Lord Shiva saying that, I can't find anybody to give me a good fight. I'm always looking for somebody to fight. Nobody will fight with me because I've got a thousand arms. Nobody can give me a good battle. So Lord Shiva told this Banasura, you're a rascal. You're a Rascal, I've given you this benediction, you don't know how to use it properly. It would have been better I didn't give you this benediction. Anyway, it happened that Bana's daughter, Usha, had gotten into this relationship with Krishna's grandson, Aniruddha. It's a long story, we won't go into all the details. Probably most of you know the whole thing about Chitra, Chitraleka, Usha's friend, going to Dwarka and bringing Aniruddha by her mystic power. She brought him there to their palace. And Bana didn't know that his daughter was having a relationship with this young man. And when he found out, he was extremely angry because he said, you know, he has the demonic qualities and the nature of the demonic quality person, the person with the demonic nature, become angry very easily. They get really angry. They cannot control their anger. So, Bana became really angry and there was a great battle. Anir Aniruddha fought, but Bana had weapons like his, uh, his Nagapashu. And he used this Nagapashu to capture Anirudh. And they took him a prisoner. So for a long time, Aniruddha had disappeared from Dwarka and nobody knew where he was. Then Narada Muni came and told everything. And so then Lord Krishna came with Balaram and with their army. Big army and so a big battle takes place. And this is where Lord Shiva fights Lord Krishna. Lord Shiva and Lord Krishna fought each other because Lord Shiva had promised Banasura you see, he, he told Banasura, I'll give you whatever benediction you want. So Bana said, I simply want that you will stay here and protect me. If any of my enemies come, you will fight, you will help me defend myself against my enemies. So when Lord Krishna came with his army, so Bana has Lord Shiva on his side. So Lord Shiva fights Lord Krishna. And it's described how they used different weapons, different astras were released. They would release a Brahmastra weapon and Krishna would counteract it with another Brahmastra. 
And then Lord Shiva would release a, a hurricane weapon and Lord, Shiva, uh, Lord Krishna would counteract it with a mountain weapon. And then Lord Shiva would release a, a fire weapon. And Lord Krishna would counteract it with a water weapon, like rain. They put out the fire. So this way it was a wonderful battle. They were having different weapons were being used. Then Lord Shiva used his uh, Shiva the, the Shiva Dwara weapon. So Lord Krishna has Narayan Dwara. And then Lord Krishna released one weapon which made everybody yawn. Just like maybe you're hearing the class and you, oh, <laughs> you start yawning, right? You feel tired. So Krishna had a weapon which made Lord Shiva start to yawn. Lord Shiva felt so tired he left the battle and went away. So when Lord Shiva went away to take rest, it was Bana who came. And Banasura comes and he starts to fight Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna can understand this Banasura is too proud because he's got 1,000 arms. So Lord Krishna began to cut off his arms. And at that time, Lord Shiva came. And Lord Shiva came and he begged to Lord Krishna that, please, he is my devotee. So Lord Krishna considered, actually, this demon Bana had all bad qualities, but he had one good quality. His one good quality was he was very devoted to Lord Shiva, and he always gave very, very nice service to Lord Shiva. Just like how did he get 1,000 arms? Because he played, he played the drum very nicely for Lord Shiva so that Lord Shiva could dance. Lord Shiva is Nata, Nagara, Nataraj. He likes to dance, just as we all like to chant and dance. So Lord Shiva also enjoys dancing. Lord Krishna also is a great dancer. He dances on the hoods of Kaliya and he dances in Rasa Leela. Lord Shiva also likes to dance. So it's important when you dance, you need a good Madanga player. The good Madanga player will inspire everyone to dance nicely. So this Banasura had been playing the drum nicely for Lord Shiva. And he'd been doing all kinds of service for Lord Shiva. And Lord Shiva felt obliged to him. So when Lord Krishna was cutting off his arms, at that time Lord Shiva came in front of Lord Krishna and he offered prayers to Lord Krishna. And he begged Lord Krishna that you please spare his life because he is my devotee and he has given me very nice service. So Lord Krishna gave him the benediction. He said, yes, I'm only, I'm going to cut off his arms, I'll leave him with four arms. So you have a form like mine. You have a four-arm form. And I, Lord Krishna said that this Bana will also be Amara. He will not be subject to old age and invalidity. He can live forever. This is Lord Krishna's blessing on this demon Bana. Why did he bless him like this? Because he was such a nice devotee of Lord Shiva. So, even you're a devotee of Lord Shiva. But Prabhupada explains, for people who are very materialistic, very much in the bodily concept of life, then he said, sometimes like women, they have to worship their husband because there's so much in the bodily concept of life. They will worship their husband. Or they will worship Devas, demigods, like Lord Shiva. So it's permitted, Vedic cultures like that, you worship Lord Shiva, you'll get material results. If you want eternal results, we should worship the Supreme Lord Krishna. Do you like our ad-free videos? Be sure to subscribe to our channel 
We publish new videos every day, and don't forget to like and share our channel.